Hey everybody, it's Josh. Welcome back to the Landlord Harassment Channel and I um, want to give you an update on the Haverkamp property situation and uh, kind of go over some stuff. Now, I said in my last video, is my phone shaking? It seems to be shaking. Anyway, I said in my last video that, um, that I was kind of backing down and letting Haverkamp sort of push me out of here. Uh, so that I didn't have to go to court, and I gave my reasons for that, but um, I'm sort of back in fight mode now, so I told uh, Vinny, who's one of the main managers here, I told him to go ahead and take me to court and try to evict me if that's what he wants to do. Um, and the reason for that is because they're kind of putting me in a situation where I don't really have any choice. Um, the deal that they offered me was just, I mean, I'm not sure I'm even legally allowed to speak about it, but let's just say, no, absolutely not. Now, somebody had asked me, the main manager that has been harassing me for the last year on this property, um, her name is Brooke Farmer, I've talked about her before, um, Somebody had asked me if I thought Brooke was part of Cornerstone, like she was part of Cornerstone Church. The truth is, I don't know that much about Brooke's like personal life and what she does. Um, I think she's part of the Cornerstone network overall. Um, I think she's got, you know, I think she's connected to the Westenbergs and the Haverkamps, like to the, like I think their parents are family friends. And so I think there's that, there, that connection there. But I mean, Brooke doesn't, Brooke doesn't strike me as the real hardcore Christian type. Um, and she certainly doesn't strike me as the cornerstone type. Um, a lot of Christians, and especially a lot of people from the cornerstone crowd, they have this certain presence about them. I don't know how to explain it. It's like this over-sanitized shine. Um for lack of a better term. That's the only thing I can think of to say. It's like this over-sanitized shine, and you can kind of see it in their presence, and you can kind of feel it when you're around them. Um, it's like a shine that kind of, I don't know. It's not really like a good shine, but it's just like, like have you ever taken like a dirty wash rag and wiped off your car with it? And it, and it shines a little bit more than what it was because you, you, at least you wiped it off. But it's not shine, as, shining, as, as shiny as it would be if you, if you had like a clean rag. So you take some sanitizer and you put sanitizer over your shine to sort of make it shine more. So that people don't notice like the dirtiness of the shine. That's kind of like the shine that a lot of cornerstone people have. And I don't know how else to explain it, but it's something in their presence. It's something in the way they carry themselves. It's just It's just there to be seen. You know what I'm saying? You can just... I don't know how to how else a lot of Christians have that, and the cornerstone stone crowd definitely has that. The reason I'm telling you all this is because Brooke doesn't have that. Um, Brooke does not project to me at all that she's this deeply committed Christian type, and certainly not corner the cornerstone type. Brooke doesn't really give off much energy at all. Like I can't detect any particular like when she's in a normal state of mind. I can't detect any particular vibe coming from her at all. When Brooke's around, she's just kind of there. I don't know how, how else to explain it. So I, I think I would be able to pick up on if she was part of Cornerstone just by her whole way that she carries herself. And she doesn't carry herself like a Cornerstone person. So I think she's connected to them. I think she's grew up with a lot of them. I think her parents are connected to them, but I don't feel like she's really all that into that culture. Like I said, I could be wrong. And to be honest, I don't care all that much. You know, she would stop bothering me. I, I wouldn't have anything to say about her, but it is what it is. Now, because I told Vinny to go ahead and try to evict me, that's probably what they're going to try to do. Whether or not they believe they can win their case, I don't know. But they just want to put me through it, that's for sure. And again, I don't deserve this. You can't ask for a more perfect tenant than, than, than I've been here in the last eight years. You can't, you can't ask for a quieter. You, it's, it's pretty hard to live a quieter life inside my apartment 
than I do. When I'm working from my apartment, I'm online, so I'm doing it quietly. When I'm not working and I'm here, all I really do is I read about subjects I want to learn about or I watch videos about subjects I want to know more about. Um, that's all I do in here. I don't do nothing else in here really. So you can't really live a quieter life than I do. I do expect the same respect from my neighbors in return. Now, I don't expect them to be as quiet as me. Um, that's not possible. Most of them are half my age. I get it. But you're not just going to be pounding on my ceiling on a daily basis and expect me to put up with that. You know, once that starts happening for two or three or four days, I am going to call you out on it. Whether I hit the ceiling back with my broom, whether I go upstairs and knock your door, whether I leave you a note, I'm going to respond to that somehow. Because I have the right to peace and quiet in my home. You're not just, you shouldn't be able to just pound on my ceiling and get away with it, you know. But Brooke doesn't respect my rights. At no point in the last year has she ever done anything that even remotely shows any regard for my right to my quiet enjoyment of my apartment. She does nothing about the noise coming from upstairs. And every time I try to do something about the noise, whether I leave a note for the neighbors or whatever it is, I get written up or I get... um threatened with eviction, and now I'm actually getting evicted because I left the upstairs neighbors a note telling them to knock off the noise. So, she doesn't do this to other tenants, all right? There's noise issues in all these buildings. I've talked about this before. People hit walls all the, and ceilings all the time to get other neighbors to stop making noise. They hit walls to get neighbors to stop pounding, they hit walls to get neighbors to get their dogs to stop barking, whatever it is. Brooke never does anything about it. She only cares when I want to fight back against the noise. She only care, wants, it wants to involve herself when I hit the ceiling to get the noise to stop above me. So it's definitely just this personal issue with me that she's using her sort of landlord powers to impose her will on me. Now, as far as court goes... Should this go to court? My guess is that Vinny will step in and during the court proceedings and try to take responsibility on himself so that he's going to try to shield Brooke as much as possible. Uh, but I've got too much on Brooke, you know what I mean? So I don't, I'm not sure how well that's going to work. But this is where things are at, people. This is where things are at. I do know this. If I get evicted, this isn't over. Because I can't allow Brooke to get away with this. So I'm going to... If it takes me the rest of my life using legal means to come after Havercamp Properties, then that's what it takes me. I'm going to keep coming after them until I get some justice. And it's not just for me. It's not just for me. It is for me. I mean, I want some justice for myself. There is that selfish aspect to it. But Brooke is going to do this to someone else eventually. I, I'm not the only person she's ever going to do this to. She's got this in her. She's going to do this to someone else that she feels is a lesser tenant or doesn't belong here or whatever. There's, and it's probably going to be another quiet guy like me who's just trying to have some peace and quiet. And she's going to bully and intimidate that person too. So, I mean, I can't, like, I, I can't let, let her get away with that if I can at all help it. So that's where that goes. No. A lot of you who have watched my videos, I understand that you don't know what's going on. You don't know whether to believe my side of the story or whether to believe Brooke's side of the story. So I'm going to leave you with this one. I've said it over and over again. I've been a quiet, paying tenant here for over eight years now. I never had any problems with management until Brooke came along. Now, 
They decided not to renew with me a few months ago. They decided to deny me my renewal offer, which is illegal. It's retaliation, but we'll save that for another day. And then they just filed then they just filed eviction against me, or they started the process of evicting me a month ago now. Even though they knew I was gonna basically be out in August anyway. Given that knowledge, only one of two things can be true. So I'm asking whoever watches my videos out here to think about this. It's it's very rare that you evict somebody that who has been paying his rent on time for eight years and who's, who's likely going to be out in another six months anyway. It's just kind of like not a usual thing to do. So, only one of two, given the situation, only one of two things can be true. Either I am the worst tenant that they've ever had at Havercamp Properties. And they just have to push me out of here. Because I'm just so disruptive in here. And I decided after seven years of having no problems here whatsoever to suddenly just start becoming a problem tenant in my last year of residency here. Either that's the case, and I'm just this awful tenant that they just need to push out of here any way they can because that's how bad of a tenant I am. Or, I've been telling you the truth about Brook Farmer's harassment this whole time. One of those two things is true. There can't be no really in-between in this situation. There is no nuance here. So I guess I'll let you guys decide which one is true. That's all I got for today. I don't know what's coming next. Probably a court date. I'm ready for it. If I get evicted, I'm ready for that too. You know, if I, if I had done even a little bit wrong, if I had, if I were the one disrupting my neighbors, if I were doing things in here on a regular basis that caused my neighbors noise issues or caused them problems or whatever, I would be the first to admit it and kind of back down. I might even go walk into court and say, hey, I deserve this eviction. If I had done a even a little bit wrong, I wouldn't even be fighting this eviction. I would tell them, don't worry about evicting me. I'll move out on my own. I was out of order. Let's just drop this, you know, blah, blah, blah. That's what I would be doing. But because of Brooke Farmer's personal problem with me, they're choosing to evict a guy who's never given them any reason to have trouble with them. You're, you're, you're basically evicting your, your quietest, least troublemaking tenant. You know, there's nothing I do in here that attracts anybody's attention, not from my neighbors, not from management, not nothing. I live an absolutely quiet life in here. And that's all I want to do. All I want to do is live a quiet life in my own apartment and have some relative peace and quiet around me. That's it. That's all I've wanted from the beginning of all this. Well, Brooke doesn't want to let me have that, and now she has some power, and that's just the way things are. So, but I'm not letting it get me down no more. I mean, it's kind of getting me down because it's hanging over my head, but I know I've done nothing wrong. That's what I'm trying to say. That's why I'm fighting. It's because I know I've done absolutely nothing wrong. And um, I don't deserve any of this. So that's all for today, guys. See you soon.